Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to talk about the Niji Max 3. It's a massive and powerful diode laser and engraving machine. It comes with a host of extras and is by far the largest laser that I own. So how do I like it? Well, let's find out. The Niji Max 3 comes well packaged with everything you need to get started. I felt that the instruction pamphlet that came with the machine was a bit small and might be slightly confusing to those who have never put a machine together, so I made an assembly video on how to put the whole thing together that you can reference in the link above or in the video description. It wasn't the easiest machine I had put together, but not super difficult either. One thing that you are going to want to do because of the size is mount this to a spoil board. I mounted mine to a three and a half by two foot piece of plywood, half an inch thick. The Niji Max 3 has a massive work area of 810 millimeters by 460 millimeters, or around 32 by 18 inches. You can also purchase an extension Y rails for this machine that would make the machine 810 millimeters by 1030 millimeters or 32 by 40 inches. The frame is constructed out of aluminum extrusion and mostly metal plates. There are only a few acrylic parts on the x-axis gantry which I will talk about in a moment. The frame that the machine is built with is 15 by 15 and 15 by 30 aluminum extrusion and not the 2020 aluminum extrusion that I have seen on some of my other machines as well as on many 3D printers. This may be to help with the weight of such a large machine, but it seems to handle the work just fine. As for the acrylic plates I was talking about a moment ago, they are only on the x-axis gantry, and I was a little surprised that this was acrylic seeing how the rest of the machine was metal. At the time of this review, if you purchase the machine through the Niji website, the kit comes with extra add-ons for this machine, including a metal height adjuster that replaces the front acrylic plate. I would highly recommend if you are getting this component to install it on the gantry first before assembling the machine, as it is much harder to do after the machine has been assembled. I got it afterwards, so I had to do it with the machine assembled, which was just much more difficult. Another free gift that comes from the website are these belt tension adjustment blocks. I also got these after I had already had the machine together, but once I noticed I was getting some wobbling on some of my burns, I installed them and got a much nicer and tighter burn after I was able to tighten the belts. You can see the D on this logo did much better after I was able to properly tighten the belts. The last free gift that you get is this CNC air assist block that fits on the laser module which is great and works in conjunction with the electric air control valve on the machine that allows you to automatically switch between using and shutting off the air assist based on what layer you're working on. So you could do both a cut and engrave pass in the same job and turn the air assist off while engraving and only use it for cutting. The machine is also equipped with limit switches so the machine can be used with absolute coordinates which is great for a machine this size. Before plugging in the machine for the first time, manually move the gantry to the front of the machine until both sides touch the front of the frame. When the machine is powered on, the stepper motors are locked on both sides of the y-axis to make sure the y-axis stays level and one side can't accidentally be off from the other. With the precision of the motors and having the frame screwed down to the spoil board, I was able to hit the exact same point on the grid that I burned into the spoil board. The machine has a 32-bit motherboard and can engrave at a speed of up to 60,000 millimeters per minute according to the manufacturer. I personally never tried to push it that fast. The machine can also be controlled in various ways from their own computer and mobile apps as well as Gerbil software such as Lightburn or Laser Gerbil. It is recommended that when using the machine for the first time, you open it with the Niji software so it can look for any firmware updates. You can do jobs in the Niji software or app but I prefer Lightburn to control the machine. The laser module that came with my machine is the Niji A4640 Adjustable Focus 12 Watt Optical Output Laser Module. It has a spot size of 0.04 by 0.06 millimeters and is advertised to cut wood up to 20 millimeters when adjusted properly and using an air assist. 
The machine comes with the hookups and parts for the air assist, but does not come with an air source. I simply hooked up my fish air pump that I have used for some of my other laser machines. As I have said, this laser module is an adjustable focus and not a fixed focus like many of the other machines I have reviewed in the past. Niji does have a fixed focus laser that can come as an option with this machine, the E40. It comes with an integrated air assist and is rated at 11 watts of optical power. So the first thing I engraved was a grid on a spoil board, which is always the first thing I engrave with a new machine. Thankfully, this machine comes with hardware to attach this machine to a spoil board, which makes this very easy. You can find a link if you are interested in this grid in the video description. The adjustable focus was a bit of a new thing for me, but it wasn't hard to figure out, but it did take some YouTube videos to completely figure it out. Essentially, you want the laser lens to be 55 millimeters from the surface while engraving and 30 millimeters from the surface while cutting. You also have to use a screwdriver to manually adjust the lens for cutting and make sure that you have the correct height. It took a little bit to get the height correct, but eventually I was able to cut through this half inch piece of plywood in six passes. It also made quick work of this five millimeter plywood and of course this two millimeter wood as well. The machine also comes with this nine millimeter thick test block which I'm assuming is some sort of balsa wood, and it cut through it in three passes. I also just ran a standard speed power test, and even at the higher speeds, it was very powerful. I also ran this Mount Rushmore image through, and the detail was very nice at 338 dpi, and ran at 8,000 millimeters per minute. So overall, my impressions with this machine is that it's pretty nice. I was afraid that a machine this size would have issues keeping square, but it surprised me how solid it is when attached down to a spoil board. I did feel like the assembly instructions could use some help since it seemed to be missing some sections, such as attaching the air valve, and I didn't see any instructions on how to attach the belt tensioner, or more crucially, the height adjuster. It wasn't super hard to figure out, but it would have been nice if I could have found something to better explain it. Especially for beginners, that might not be a super intuitive thing to figure out. I'm still a little on the fence about the adjustable focus laser, as I feel it was a little harder to dial in correctly, and it might have been easier with the E40 fixed focus module. It does pack quite a punch for a small light laser module though. This laser really will cater to those who want a quality machine with a huge burn area. Now I just need to figure out what I want to make to utilize that huge area. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this quick look at the Niji Max 3. If you did, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing for even more content having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, CNC, and all things Maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.